Hello and welcome to the quick start guide for the procedural CD generator 1.2.1. In this video, we'll go over the high level steps for creating your city from initial creation, configuring your city zones, spawning your roads and plots, generating your buildings, props and foliage, and finally baking some of those blueprints so we can convert them to uh, nanite enabled static meshes. And we're going to be follow along the procedural city generator workflow document so we are going to follow all of the same steps i will leave a link in the description of this video so if you want to follow along with the written guide or simply skip the video and just look at the written guide you can do so as well so i'm going to go ahead and move this out and jump immediately to unreal and here what i did is i created a new basic level i selected the floor and i scaled it 500 by 500 by one and now we're going to procedural city, blueprints, interface, and right here where it says PCG underscore main, we're going to right click and select run editor utility widget. This is going to be the main UI we will use to create our city. And the first thing we'll do is click spawn scene blueprints. And you see that automatically we have a new folder called PCG and another called main. And we're going to name our city. Let's call this uh, tutorialville just name it whatever you want click create city and then we're going to click spawn city limits and right there you see that we have spawned our city limits this is the size of our city effectively and we're going to zoom in here a little bit and i'm going to click control one to make a quick bookmark for the camera so we can quickly come back here uh, we have an option here to have different shapes for our city limits. So if you go into the outliner here and click city limits, as you see here, we have several options. We have three um, primary shapes that we can use. We have a box, which is the default here. And you see that we can change the size and the scale by changing these numbers here. And you can see how they're updating there. But we also have the option of using a cylinder or a triangle. So if we make this really small, let's say 20 by 20, and we scale up our cylinder, let's make this 2000 by 2000, for example, and we click on marker visible, we wanna make sure that we can see it. You can see that now we have a circular shape. So you can create a city that has a circular shape as its limits, a box shape, or if you want to, you can even use a triangle shape. So again, we're gonna click here and we're gonna make the triangle bigger. Let's say 2000 by something like 1000. And you can see that now we have a city that would have a shape of a triangle. So you have these three primitive shapes that you can use for your city limits. Or alternatively, you can actually use a custom shape, which is optional for your city limits. So instead of using any of the primitive shapes, and again, following the guide here, we're going to select our city limits and go all the way down to the default section and click on create shape. And it's important to know that create shape will create a spline of the size of the box collision. So I recommend that you leave the uh, bound scale box to its default, and then you uh, create the shape and this is a regular spline so you are free to right click on the spline itself oops and click on add spline point here and you can add as many spline points as you want to create your custom shape so I'm going to go ahead and add a few spline points here just to make a nice shape here you can add as many as you want and it is recommended that you create a convex shape instead of a concave shape. Convex meaning this, this kind of shape where you don't have any sides that go inwards. And this is because Unreal Engine does a much better job at collision detection for convex shapes. So if you wanted to leave it like this, uh, all we need to do here is go down to the default section again and click on Create Mesh. And right there, we will create a mesh that is the shape of our spline. And this is going to be the limit for our city. Uh, so great, we could leave it there. 
or we could take it one step further. And I'm going to go ahead and hide because this is really distracting the marker. So we're going to click on marker visible and deselect it just so we can see the shape itself. We could leave our city limits like this, or we could create a road that goes all around our city limits. And if you ever saw the matrix awakened city, that is basically what they did. The actual city limits have a road that kind of encircles the entire city. So if you wanted to do that type of city, you can do it as well. And you can do it by, again, going down to the default section here and click on Create Roads. And right there, you'll see that we have a road that has been created with the shape of our uh, spline. Now, obviously, the road has many more points and it is a curve, so it's going to obviously approximate that shape. And by default, we have a highway that spawns, which is why you see that red there. Uh, I do recommend that you select the highway at this point and go up there and click on construction mode and disable construction mode. That is to give the final shape that we're going to be using to um, connect all of our other roads. So at this point, we want to go ahead and uh, spawn our road connectors. So click spawn road connector. And these are going to be roundabouts that we use around our city to create an initial design for our road network. So you should spawn at least two road connectors, but you can spawn as many as you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and do four, just so I can keep fairly close to the workflow guide. I would say, between three and five would be what I would recommend as the ideal kind of number. If you have a really, really big city, you can obviously spawn more, but that's about the right uh, amount. And you can select them yourself and you can kind of move them around, create whatever shape you feel is the best one. The last thing we'll do here is we want to select our floor mesh. In this case, it's literally called floor we want to click assign selected actor as ground click there and you'll see a message saying that assigned floor the name of this mesh as the ground actor all right that is all for creation and now the next step of creating our city is adding our city zone so go ahead and click on the zones tab right here and for now we're going to select the zone we're going to spawn a commercial zone so click on spawn selected zone and you'll see that we have a zone that just spawned in the middle of the city. We can go ahead and select it. You can see on the outliner that we have the zone underscore commercial. So really quickly, the city zones are basic volumes that you're going to place around your city that define what types of buildings, props, and foliage can spawn or generate in that section of the city. And just like the city limits, we have very similar options. So with the zone selected here, you see that we have, again, three different primitives that we can use to define the shape of the zone. By default, we're using the box, but we can, yet again, make this smaller, something like five by five, and then we can decide to use, for example, a cylinder, and we can do something like 500 by 500. And we would have a commercial zone that is a perfect cylinder. Obviously, you can scale it any way you want, so it can be something like 700, right? More like a little oval shape. And just like the city uh, limits, we can also use a custom shape, and this is optional. So in this case, let's go ahead and create a custom shape just like the limits. So we're going to scroll all the way down and click on Create Spline Shape. And you'll see that we have a spline, and we can click on the spline here. And we can move the spline points any way we want. We can right click on the spline and select add spline point here. Whoops. And you can see that we can now start generating our own custom shape for the zone. There you go. And I'm just going to add one more here. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit more. And um, you can click away from it and now we can reposition it any way we want. So let's say that we didn't want the zone to go inside this connection. Here we can do just that. We're gonna reshape it any way we want. And just the same as the city limits, it is recommended that you stick with a convex shape 
just for better collision detection. Another thing that is important and new to this update is that we are loading this data directly from a data table. So right here under uh, setup spawn, there is an option called load data table and it is on by default. And if we expand this section here, we can see that we are using this data table. Let's click on this icon here to navigate to the data table and we're gonna open it. And you can see that this data table has a row per city zone. So we have commercial, industrial, residential, rural, the old town. And with commercial selected, you can see that we have the exact same options that we have on the zone. So if you want to make changes to your zone here, you can do it on the instance in your level, or you can come here and make changes directly to your city zone in the data table. Alternatively, you can click on add and create as many custom zones as you want. And then all you have to do is come here and then under row name, you click on the drop down and any new rows that you add will appear on this drop down. You go ahead and select it and you'll automatically load all of that data into your zone. If you want to do it manually, you can go all the way down and click on load data table and it'll just load it and you can see the information there. Or if you do nothing and leave this option enabled, load data table, when you start spawning your buildings, the zone will load the data from the data table. So this is something that is important to understand. If you make changes to the building details here, but you leave load data table, it will override this data. So make sure that if you want a custom zone, that you disable load data table, and then you'll see that all the information there will apply. All right, really quickly, let's go ahead and add a few extra zones. And we can go ahead and scale this zone. So I'm gonna grab this zone and I'm going to just leave it there and just scale it really big. And uh, it is okay if the zone spills out from the city. Uh, the uh, buildings and the roads will not exceed the city limits. So you can go ahead and make it really big just as long as it covers the area that you're interested in, right? So in this case, we'll do that. And you notice that they are overlapping. One important concept that you, that you should understand is that when two zones overlap, the quote unquote tallest zone is going to prevail. So if I select, for example, the industrial zone, you see on the scale here, there's a Z value of 100. But if I click on the residential zone here, the Z value is 50. And if I click on the rural section, the Z value is 20. In other words, if the industrial zone overlaps any of these two zones, this zone will take priority over these zones here. So if you wanted the residential uh, zone to take priority on, on an overlap, you need to just make the Z value bigger than that zone. And if I go all the way down, you'll see that the middle zone, the commercial, is way higher than the other ones. So even though we have some overlap here inside, when a building goes there inside this zone, it'll just use this zone as priority because we're doing basically a cast from the top to the bottom. And as soon as we hit a zone, we are going to use that zone's information. And if you have a custom shape, you'll see that right here we have an actual height, custom shape height, you see it's 25,000 units, which is why you see it being so much taller than the rest. But you could make a custom shape shorter than any of the other shapes to make sure that the other shapes take precedence. All right. Uh, and that is all we're going to go through in this section. One last thing before we go into the rows. Typically, we want to hide the, uh, the markers here. So we can go ahead and select all of our zones here. And we can go to marker visible and we can disable this option. And that way we can actually see what our city looks like uh, without those zones clearly being in the way. Okay. Now we will generate the roads for our cities. So go ahead and click on the roads tab here. And you'll see that we have three different sub tabs. We have the auto roads. These are going to be the roads that are generated procedurally by PCG. 
we have manual rows. These are rows that we place manually in the scene and we want to add them to PCG. And then we have the plots, which we'll go over in the next section. These are the plots and sidewalks in between those rows. And you'll see here we have a lot of options, but the main idea is that we have four types of roads in PCG. We have highways, which right now are used to connect two cities together. Um, you can select two specific roundabouts in two separate cities, and you can generate the highways that connect those cities. We won't be doing that in this tutorial. Then we have the main roads, which are four lane roads. We have minor roads, which are two lane roads, side roads, which are one lane roads. And then you can, if you want, spawn cul-de-sacs and then cross roads. Cul-de-sacs are spawned in minor and side roads that are not connected to another road. In other words, they have a dead end and there is a chance that a cul-de-sac may spawn. For this specific uh, tutorial, we will disable that. So go ahead and click on advanced and you'll notice that you already have the option of connect all roads enabled. So PCG will try to have every single road connected, no dead ends. But in this case, we also wanna make the chance for a cul-de-sac be zero for the minor roads and for the side rows, and we want to disable cul-de-sacs at the city edges. So we'll make sure that we have that selected and click Save Settings. We'll go back to General, and now we will generate our connecting roads. And the connecting roads are the roads that connect our road connectors or roundabouts, and they are kind of the most basic type of road that creates our shape for the road network. And right here, before we generate our main rows, we have an option, and that is to connect our connectors or our roundabouts to our edge road here to make sure that everything is always very nicely connected. This is optional and it's experimental feature, but let's go ahead and go over it now. We will select our city limits like before, and you'll notice that under your city limits, there's another blueprint called city limits underscore roads. So select that, and this is the blueprint that is uh, in charge of generating that edge road. So if we go down, you'll notice that we have generate edge road, which we already have automatically, but we can also click on generate roundabout roads. And when you click there, you'll see that it goes through each individual roundabout and it tries to spawn a new road that is not overlapping any other connections towards the um, edge road. And the reason this is still experimental is because the connection is not completely accurate. You can see when we click here that we may need to adjust the spline point. So my suggestion is that we select those rows here. So go ahead and click on all those rows that were just created, those edge roads here, and we will switch them from construction mode into the final mode because that is the final shape that we will have for the road and i'm not going to spend too much time here but here you can just click on that last spline point and kind of adjust it and make sure that the connection is as accurate and as perpendicular as possible so you can see now that from a roundabout you can basically get to the edge road to any other part of the city so now that we have that, we can go ahead and click on generate main roads right here. Just before we do that, make sure you click here on the menu and you have show stats enabled just so you can see the messages that pop up as we are generating our roads. So click on generate main roads. And as soon as you do that, you can see that some of these roads are generated. You can click generate roads, uh, main roads as many times as you want. It'll just try to keep generating some main roads and you also have the option to uh, erase or remove some of these roads these are regular spline roads so for example let's just go ahead we're going to come here and say i actually don't like this road here it's kind of cutting a weird shape you can just select it and click delete no problem so you can keep doing that and configuring these roads you can also move the roads uh, remove spline points change the curves etc again these are just standard spline roads as you can see here so for example i can just go ahead and move this point here just to give it a little bit of a nicer shape once you're happy with this we're going to now 
generate our minor rows and for the minor and side rows we are going to do this in batches meaning that we're going to spawn a certain amount of rows per click so when you click on generate minor rows you'll see that we're generating the first 10 so we're going to keep clicking and we're going to see the batch go up until we see the message that says done we've con we've um, generated all of the minor rows here you can stop at any point or you can continue until you're happy but before you go into the next category like side rows you want to make sure you click on reset batch before you start again on another row type and again we're going to click on generate side rows here and you can see that we have the batches here so i'm just going to click a little bit faster and now we are done so if you're happy with this you can just go ahead and leave it like that you can, if you're not happy, remove the side rows here and you can generate them again. So reset batch and we're going to generate them again. And you're going to have a different pattern. It is randomly generated. But important thing to note is that it does go in this order. We first generate the main rows and then the minor rows generate from the main rows, as you can see there, and then the side rows generate from the minor rows. So think about that as a hierarchy. As a real city you typically wouldn't see uh, a really big road and then a really tiny road it kind of just generates that way so let's go ahead and save our level here and let's assume that we are very happy with our generated roads but we want to do a small to we want to add our own manual road we see that there's this, an empty space here and would like to add something here so we can just zoom down here and let's say that we want to add one more road here and let's just choose a minor road and notice that they're color coded minor roads are yellow here so one cool thing you can do is you can literally right click either on the outliner or on the asset itself and you can click on browse to asset and you'll see that we now have the actual blueprint and we can drag it and drop it here and we're going to select the road and uh, move the spline and now we are going to, uh, let's see here, rotate the road and try to create a connection. Something that I, that I found useful is grab one of the rows that is already connected here, copy the yaw value. So we're going to do that and copy it here. And now we are going to rotate this by 180 degrees. So now you go into the rotation and you rotate exactly 180 degrees. And you notice that now is perfectly connecting to the other road and we're just going to alt drag to create a new spline point and alt drag again and in this case we'll just try to match it to create an intersection here and again in this video we're not going to spend too much time trying to get everything perfect I, I just want you guys to get the general idea of how to do all this. Now notice that just because I added this road here does not mean that the road is added to PCG yet. So if you click on any other road, for example, you'll see that the road is under a specific folder and has a specific name, including the name of the, the city, tutorialville underscore main underscore road and a number. This one we just added manually does not have that option. So for this, we'll click on manual roads and with the road selected, we'll click add selected roads to city. And now it says selected roads added. And now with this selected notice, we're going to deselect it and click it again. Then we now have the road properly named. Now it is a road 146 and moved under the right folder. That's how you know that the road is now being considered as part of PCG. Uh, we're going to go ahead and zoom out. And we're going to leave this for now as our final road network for our city. Notice that all of the roads are connected, as we said, which makes all of our plots, which we're going to generate next, really convenient because everything is in a very specific shape. All right, before we go to the plots, there are a few additional things that we want to do with the roads. So let's go ahead and click on auto roads here. And we're going to use some of the options here at the bottom. We want to select the roads by type. In this case, let's go ahead and click on main roads and we're going to go into the details panel and deselect construction mode. 
The reason for that is because the construction mode and the final mesh for the roads can sometimes have slightly different shapes. The construction mode is uh, very rough and it just creates uh, segments between spline points and the final mode creates a much more consistent, evenly spaced uh, road with uh, smaller segments. That means that sometimes the shapes are different. And if we want to generate our plots with the correct shape, we want to make sure that we have that final shape for our city. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Click on uh, main roads as you did, deselect construction. And now we're going to apply some additional options here for those roads. Namely, we're going to create our intersections, adjust points, and adjust for intersections. We're going to do those three things. So right now we're going to click create intersections and we're going to apply that action. Now we're going to select our minor roads and deselect construction mode here. And those minor roads are going to go now into their final form. And now we are again going to create our intersections. Now we're going to select our side roads and once again remove the construction mode check here and we're going to create our intersections and now we're going to do the same thing we're going to go back to main roads and we're going to adjust points apply the action go to minor roads adjust points apply action side roads adjust points and finally we're going back kind of in a circle here adjust for intersections and apply the action here and notice as i am selecting the roads here i don't really need to click the button here even though you can uh, it automatically picks all of the roads of that type so it just makes it a little bit more convenient when we're applying those actions okay and now we are ready to generate our plot so we're going to go ahead and click on save all we'll save our level and from here we are going to click on plots right here at the top and we have two different ways of generating our plots. We have the procedural way and we have the manual way. Now procedural will go through every single road type here and try to spawn the uh, plots in between those roads. And then the manual way, you actually select exactly where you want those plots to spawn. We're not going to go through all of the roads just to save a little bit of time, but we'll go through the process. So right here, we're going to uh, make sure it's a quick click reset back just for good measure and we click on spawn on side road and just like before you see that we're doing this in batches so we're going to click keep clicking here and you'll see that as we click the button we're going to be spawning more and more batches and sometimes you'll see that we have a shader that needs to compile this is a fresh copy of pcg from the launcher uh, so unreal needs a little bit of time to do that we're going to keep going there and you can see that as we keep going we're going to go through the batch so let's just go ahead and leave it like this for now that is going to be the procedural but again you would do the same thing for minor and then main roads here and you can choose to remove those plots just as the roads right here now we click on manual and it's going to be a little bit different um, you will have a spawn manager which automatically spawns so you don't really have to do that and it is active and the way you do that is that you're going to click in uh, the play here and during gameplay you're going to select the specific areas where you want your plots to spawn so let's go ahead and do that with this active we'll click on play and you'll see that right here we have a very top view of the city and we have some specific controls so you can zoom in and out by using your mouse wheel here <clears throat> and using your right click mouse button your right click mouse you can move around your city so you can see here and then if you want to add a plot in a specific place you left click on that area so let's say i want to add a plot here We'll left click and you'll see that we have a little red marker here. So anywhere you place these uh, circles, we are going to spawn a plot. And since you're doing this manually for best results, you want to make sure that you select the center of the shape. 
So instead of going in this case, like here in this corner, you want to make sure that you select the center. Uh, so I'm just going to add a few more here. There, and I think I'll leave it there. Again, we could we could take our time and do more, but I think this is good enough for now. Okay, and then we're going to stop simulating, and you won't really see anything. And now you're going to click on Spawn Plots. And it's hard to see, but the, the plots actually spawned. And then you can just click on Generate Plots. And you can see that now they're being filled out. And again, we want to make sure that we select Show Stats. That way we see the batch number that we have here. So you do have a lot more control in manual mode. And honestly, it's not that much slower than procedural. So I would advise if you want to have very specific places where you want your plots, just go ahead and use uh, manual mode. If you want it all around all of your city, I would start with procedural just because it's easier and then switch to manual. One last thing, when you're done, you want to deselect this active because otherwise when you click play, you'll go back to that um, manager mode, so to speak. So we want to deselect this. And now we're going to zoom out uh, down here and we can see, <clears throat> I guess I forgot to click here. We can see that we have plots all around this area. Alternatively, you could actually, let's just do that right now. Let's just go ahead and just add it. Click play with this active. And you can see that I missed this spot, so I'm just going to go ahead and click here and just stop. And I'm going to spawn the plot. You can see it there. And you could also do it manually. You could select it right here. I'll just do it right now, just so you can see the manual process. Uh, you can select the actual plot here. You can go all the way down to the default section where you have all the different uh, buttons here. And the first thing we'll do is we'll click on trace shape and you'll see that we have if you zoom in here you see that we have a very fine line uh shape here we have a spline with a lot of different points that's a high very high resolution then we click on simplify the spline and you see that we're now starting to simplify the shape we're going to try to add corner points here we're going to adjust the points see how we can try to do a final adjustment to be as close to the shape as possible. And finally, we click on Create Plot Mesh. And you can see that now we have a plot mesh. There are two things that you should know, is that you can mark specific plots to not um, spawn buildings, say that you want a specific area empty, either for a park or an empty lot, for example. So let's just go ahead and select this one. This is gonna be roughly, if you look at the shape, the commercial zone. So we're going to select this one here and we are going to go all the way up to the setup section and we are going to <clears throat> excuse me deselect can spawn buildings we're going to deselect that and you can see that we automatically change the color to this little light red means that when we're spawning our buildings no buildings will spawn on this plot which means that later on we can use this plot for literally anything, an empty lot, a little park, whatever we want. So let's choose another one here, just for good measure. Let's just say this one here. Can spawn buildings, we're gonna make that false. We have these two areas where we cannot spawn. We can also add sidewalks. So for a lot of these plots, we're gonna select the, you can select plots here. You can select all of the plots, or you can manually select individual plots. So in this case, we'll do it individually. So we'll select these ones here, for example, and we go there and click on Generate Sidewalk. We're going to enable that, and when we do that, you can see that now we have some sidewalks here. One more thing is that you can uh, modify the shape. So for example, I just noticed this little error here. So if I click here, you'll notice that we are missing this part. So we can, for example, grab any of these points here and move them along the shape. And you can see as, as soon as I start moving them and I can add new spline points, the shape immediately starts to uh, 
adjust. So these are regular spline points and the actual shape is derived from the spline itself. Now we have some plots that have been spawned. We did it in a procedural way, in a manual way. We can select any of these plots and mark them as um, no buildings are allowed and you can generate the sidewalk just by selecting that option. Okay, and just before we move on to the buildings, we wanna make sure we deselect the active here for our manual manager. And we go back to the auto roads and we want to make sure that we spawn our crossroads. So let's go ahead and select our main roads here. And again, make sure that you have show stats and we'll click on spawn crossroads. And you'll see the same thing. We're going to batch our crossroads spawning until you see done. Then we go and do the same thing for minor. And we'll do side rows. All right. Uh, the next step is actually parks, but this only applies if you have the procedural park asset from the marketplace. There's a separate tutorial on how to add the custom UI for the parks here. This would be the step where you actually add those parks to your city, and then we move on to our buildings. All right, and now we're going to click on the buildings tab here, and we are going to focus mostly on the generation section here. If we had cool decides, we would start by spawning the cool decide buildings by clicking this button here. But in this case, we only have road buildings. All right. Now we're going to start by spawning our buildings. We want to make sure that we show our stats here. And this is going to spawn our buildings in batches. This is typically the heaviest part of the city generation. And it can take a little bit of time as it goes through all of the roads and spawns our buildings. So I'm going to go ahead and cut until the buildings have been completely spawned. That way we speed up the video a little bit. All right, we're almost done. We click one more time. And you can see that we have uh, spawned all of our buildings. You can see the, the message done here. And you can see now that we have a bunch of buildings. And now the next step is to set up their mailboxes, if they have any, and to set up their driveways. And you can see if you go to this section here and you click on the drop down, you can see that we have several different options for our buildings, set the mailbox, set the driveways, and even spawn our props. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to set our mailboxes and we want to be able to select the specific type of building and then we want to apply the action. So in this case, if you click here, you can see that not only do we have buildings by zone category, like commercial, industrial, etc., we have also every single type of building here. So if you wanted to select, for example, all of the commercial buildings, you can see the category here, you click on select, and you can see that it's obviously selecting all of the buildings inside our commercial zone. At this point, we select set mailbox and we click apply action and we can do the same thing for industrial for example select industrial and you remember this was the industrial zone you selected all of them click set mailbox apply action and we'll do the same thing for all of our buildings residential remember this was the residential zone apply action and finally we'll do rural and let's zoom down there just so you can see exactly what's happening we just zoom out to any random uh, home here so you can see that we have here let's just look at this one here for example you can see that the mailbox by default is kind of close to the house as soon as we apply the action you see that the mailbox moves closer to the row that is a setting per building that is going to have an offset from the row so that can be configured as well but you can see that it basically knows where the road is and just kind of goes and stands there the next thing is going to be to set up our driveways and the driveways are these splines that you see here and the same thing you can see that it's not connecting to the road so now that we have rural selected we'll just might as well do that we're going to click on uh, set driveway and when we're here we're going to apply action and notice that immediately that spline connected to the road but it did not update the mesh so now with all of our buildings selected we're going to go to the details panel 
right here and we're going to go under setup and we're going to driveway options we'll expand that and we're going to click reset driveway now look what happens as soon as i reset the driveway it's going to take a second because it's a lot of different uh, actors selected and you can see that now the mesh has updated to match the spline and now you have driveways that are actually connected to the road so we're going to do the same thing for all of the other buildings so we're going to kind of back up going from uh, bottom to top so we're going to do residential and then we're going to do the same thing for industrial and finally commercial give it a second still going Again, that area is quite dense. By default, the commercial zone has a lot more density per building as you would normally see in a city center versus something like a rural zone here. You can see that we have a lot more space between the houses. And then if we look at the options here, the next option is clear driveway, which we'll use later once we spawn uh, props. For example, you may have a vehicle or a light post, anything that is blocking the, high, uh, the driveway of a home you can then use the clear driveway option and it'll actually remove anything that's in front of the driveway so the cars uh, that are parked here can actually leave. Um, so the next thing we'll do is we're going to spawn our building props. And you can see here, we're gonna click on spawn props. And this is going slightly different order than the workflow guide, but it's basically the same thing. Uh, we wanna make sure that we spawn our props here. So. The props are basically set up per building and they're going to be things like fences. Um, some, some of the buildings have trampolines uh, and even specific uh, foliage that is done for the building. So we're going to stay right here in this uh, area here. And we're going to, again, keep an, keep an eye on this home. We're going to select all of the rural homes again. And we're going to now, with spawn prop selected, click apply action and once we do that again give it a second it's going to go through all of the homes that are uh, considered rural and you can see that automatically some of the homes um, spawned some fences like this one here some have fences and trees and even a little bench here and some only have the trees and some have nothing the point is and uh, that this is uh, random Right. And this is also a prop. You have like this big tree that's next to the home. So you can easily configure this. But in this case, there's a lot of uh, randomness that is being generated here. So with that said, you can see that we have the props here. We're going to do the same thing for all of the other buildings. So one last thing is going to be adding props to the road. And just like the workflow guide, we're going to add it to this outer um, highway here. <clears throat> so again, without spending too much time, we're going to go through, um, select the road and expand the props section here. And before we enable the spline props, we want to make sure that we go into spline prop list. And we're going to do, let's see, uh, believe, let's see the direction here. So it's gonna be the right hand one. So with the road selected here, oops, we are going to see that this is a left uh, rail. So we're gonna disable that. And it's gonna take a little second here. And we're going to enable the right rail. And we are going to also enable the concrete barrier. So for the right rail by default we have some settings as far as curves so right now it's only spawning on curves and just for this example we're going to go ahead and remove that we want it to spawn everywhere so it kind of encircles the city uh, with the rail so nobody can just kind of leave i guess uh, and then finally we are going to enable the spawn spline props here and we're just going to click the button here and enable it and this is atypical because this is such a large row. We're literally encircling the entire city. It will take a little bit of time to spawn the spline props. And you can see that it did it. So let's just see what happened here. 
you can see that we have now rails that encircle the right hand side of the road notice that when we have a crossroad like in this case it automatically knows not to spawn props here and then it kind of continues around the same thing for this uh divider here that you see in the middle this like concrete divider it knows automatically to detect any crossroads and it doesn't generate there so theoretically you could be driving along this uh edge highway and at any point that you have a crossroad you can stop here and you can turn without any problems all right let's go all the way up by clicking the number one another thing that you would do at this point is configure your uh, subways there is a separate tutorial on how to do that it's a little bit more involved but you basically configure all of the different stations you create the different uh station lines like blue line red line like you would you, you would see in, in any major city you can connect all those stations and then once the player enters a subway station they have a menu when they can teleport to the correct station based on their colors okay go ahead and click on the props tab here and just like the buildings the prop information is contained inside each individual city zone and we have two types of props fixed props and random props the biggest difference obviously is that the random prop has a percent chance to spawn we're going to go ahead and spawn them in batches just like the buildings and uh, we can start with the fixed prop here we'll just usually click reset batch just to make sure that we're starting from zero and we click on spawn fixed prop and you can see that we're going to have batches just like before Done. We have all the fixed props, and now we're going to start with the random props. Okay, and you can see we are done. And there's really nothing else to do, but we can just kind of zoom down there just to see uh, the results. So we're going to kind of fly down there real quick just to see what kind of props we're talking about so for example these vehicles that you see here let me just make the camera a little smaller these vehicles that you see here are considered random props they are going to be parked all along the road same thing with this um light poles here these are considered fixed props and they're going to be spawning you guessed it at a fixed uh interval so now you're seeing that the city is starting to uh look more alive with things like this mailboxes here the uh, fire hydrant and vehicles parked also you can see that we have things like benches and trash cans uh inside the uh commercial zone so all of these are individual actors by the way so if you're not happy with the placement say that you don't want this trash can here for example you can literally select it and move it to wherever you want notice that uh, also buildings are allowed to spawn on um, plots with or without sidewalks in this case we don't have a sidewalk or they can spawn on the actual floor itself you don't even need a plot so plots are not a necessity is something that you want to add uh, as needed okay so to spawn our foliage we are going to click on the foliage tab here and we have three different types of foliage city foliage is going to spawn along the roads this is kind of one of the more typical uh, types of foliage that you find then we have an area foliage which we are going to define an area with a volume and finally a spline foliage where we are going to spawn foliage along a spline we're going to start with city foliage here and just for good measure we're going to click on reset batch and we're going to start by clicking spawn city foliage and we are done and just like before if we want to see what that looks like we can just kind of zoom down there a little bit and you can see whoops you can see that now we have for example in this zone here this is the rural zone we have some uh, pine trees that are now spawning alongside the road i think this makes it a little bit easier to see when you look at a road like this you can see that we have this foliage that has spawned alongside the road in addition to the foliage that was considered a prop for each individual building so now we're actually getting our city filled out now we're going to use the area foliage and if we zoom back out here 
we see that we have this big area here that is empty so in my opinion that is an excellent candidate to spawn some foliage so again I know we're zooming in and out quickly. We're going to zoom all the way down here. And I think this is, again, an excellent area. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to click on, whoops, we're going to click on Spawn Area Foliage. And you can see that we have a big area here that uh, signifies the volume where the foliage will spawn. So with the foliage area spawner selected here, we're going to move it and actually we want to scale it a little bit smaller to the area so notice that you can make this as big as you want and it'll avoid obstacles such as uh, props and buildings so if you wanted to you could make this as big as your city and then you can actually spawn things in but we're actually going to scale it down and try to spawn just in this area so with this selected, you can come here to the bound scale and we're going to make it smaller. We don't need to be super accurate. And the reason for that is because again, when we're spawning the foliage, it will try to avoid uh, different obstacles. So we can leave it there. We can say, okay, fine. We're going to leave it there. And since you have only one selected, you could come down here and simply click on spawn foliage. At this point, you can spawn more area uh, spawners or alternatively, once you have all of your area spawners everywhere, you can now click on spawn area foliage that you can see here. So we're going to just click here and you can click just once and you can see now that we have a lot of foliage that has spawned in this area. So if we, with this area uh, spawner selected, we can go ahead and deselect marker visible here. And again, let's see if we can kind of go down there. One second. Zoom down there. We can see that we have now an area full of foliage. So I guess this area we consider like a little <laughs> uh, forest area here in this rural zone here. Now let's go ahead and use the spline um, spawner. And we're going to do it right here. Another nice little empty spot. So just like before, we're going to click spl uh, spawn spline spawner. And with it selected, it's going gonna, it's gonna to spawn kind of in the middle of the city there. So we're going to kind of drag it here. There you go. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. And we're going to rotate it. And we're going to end it there. You can see that we have a shape there. And as we have this selected, there's a lot of different options. For example, the amount of foliage to spawn along the spline. The longer the spline, the more elaborate, the more you want to increase this number. The smaller the spline, like in this case, is fairly small. You may or may not want to spawn that many trees. But we're going to leave it all as default. And just like before, we could either click spawn foliage here, or we can do it directly on the interface here by doing spawn spline foliage. And automatically, you see that we have uh, foliage that spawns on one side of the spline. But let's say we wanted to modify that. Um, we could come here and, and change things like spawn left, right, uh, number of foliage, call distance, etc. Uh, including things like min and max width, which if you wanted something uh, that was spawning away from the spline, like maybe create a little path, you could actually get that done as well. Uh, so let's just test that just for the sake of this tutorial. We're going to remove the foliage and we're going to add here a min width of, let's say, 500 and a max width of, let's say, 1,000 just to see what that looks like. And now we're going to click spawn foliage. And you can see now that we have a little path um, created along the spline because we changed those settings there. All right, and the last step, and this is optional, would be to bake certain blueprints or objects from their uh, regular blueprint self to a nanite enabled static mesh. So if you click on the plus sign here, that's additional options. We'll see things like debug and bake, hlot and others. Click on bake, and you can see that we have the option to bake roads, plots, buildings, and uh, in, in, the, in the case of buildings, it's either the driveways 
or the props, in this case, the spline props. And we have two different options, selected or all. I personally recommend selected uh, as it doesn't lock the editor uh, that long. But if you have a really, really powerful machine, I guess, you could, I guess you could do the all. So just for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to convert some uh, of the rows that we see here. And how do you even know uh, what's nanite and what's not? Well, you can click here on this little menu that says lit. We can go to nanite visualization and we can click on triangles. And you can see that already all of the buildings that come by default with PCG are nanite enabled, which is why you see the triangles. All of the foliage is also there, but you can see a bunch of black, meaning the roads are not uh, nanite. The roads are actually a spline mesh. So what we can do now is we can select roads. So we're going to go back to lit either manually or we can select them just the same way as we've done it before. So for example, we can do, let's just do one first. So let's just select one little road here. Let's just do this one here. We're going to zoom down there so we can see. And with this road selected, we can simply click on selected roads. We're going to bake the selected roads. So click select the roads and see that it says, hey, this actor has been baked. And automatically you can see on the content browser, you are now taken to a new directory, which is procedural city meshes generated. Then there's a folder with the name of your level, level quick start, sorry, it's right here. And then there's a folder called roads. And there's a new static mesh that represents the exact road here. And you can see that doesn't really look like anything actually changed. If we go back to uh, nanite visualization and click on triangles, you can kind of see that something's going on. You can see triangles, but you can see a lot of flickering. Why is that? And the reason for that is because the regular road is still being rendered. And I did that. I didn't want to delete the road itself. Because if we make a mistake, you can just redo the whole thing without losing any data. So right here, again, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. If we click here, you can see that we are clicking the actual row. You can see that there's a spline. So with this road selected, you can now come all the way up here and select spline only. And you can do that. And again, nothing seems to have changed except that now the blueprint is still there with all of the different properties and ability to change, but now you're not generating any meshes. So now when we click on lit, nanite visualization triangles, you can clearly see that there's no more Z fighting because the actual road mesh is coming through. That mesh is this one right here. If for whatever reason you wanted to make a change, you can select the actual mesh. Notice that now I'm selecting the mesh. You can see by the icon here, you can delete it. You can enable the road one more time, and you can see that there's a little icon here uh, with the dinosaur for you to select it. You can disable spline only, and you can regenerate it again. So again, I'm showing you kind of the most granular way of doing it. You can go road by road, whatever you want, and bake it. But there is a, always a way to go back because the blueprint is there. You can also select the roads just like we did before by going to the roads tab here and selecting, let's say, for example, main roads. So we're clicking selecting main roads and you can see that all of our main roads are now selected. And now with all of them selected, we go back to plus sign bake and we can click on selected roads. And this time it's going to take a little bit more time because obviously there's a bunch more roads that need to be generated. All right, it took a little bit there, but you can see that we have a bunch of new static meshes already in the same folder and now uh, we're going to go back because if we if we again do the same thing and go to nanite triangles we're going to see a bunch of flickering so right here we don't even need to exit this mode let's go back to rows we're going to select all our main roads and right here on the details panel we're going to click spline only and all of a sudden all that flickering is gone and we're going to kind of zoom out and you can see that all the main roads are now nanite enabled. They've been baked and they are all individual files that you see here on this folder. 
we're going to leave it there for the roads. Let's go ahead and now go back to uh, the bake tab and we're going to bake a plot. So let's again exit this and let's look for a plot. Let's just go ahead and click on this one. Doesn't really matter which one. We can select whichever plot we want. Let's just click on this one, for example. And even though um, it's just a small plot, if we want to squeeze as much performance and view distance as possible, we do want to convert these to Nanite. So again, it's the same process. We're going to select the plot and we're going to click on selected plots. And as soon as we do that, yet again, you see that same flickering because we have now, uh, we have basically have an overlap between the mesh and the uh, plot. So if we go back to Nanite Triangles, you see a lot of flickering. But now if we have the plot selected, we can go here under Setup and we're going to disable Generate Plot Mesh. And boom, automatically you see that now the flickering is gone, yet the blueprint is still there. If we had sidewalks on that plot, you would then also disable Generate Sidewalks. You disable these two and the blueprint is still there. All the information is still there but now we only have that nanite mesh and finally let's look at buildings so again let's go back to lit let's look for a building that has oh how about this one right here no let's look for one with a uh, here perfect this building right here because we are going to be sorry the camera is really fast we're going to be uh converting the driveway but also the mesh so you can see here since the buildings are already nanite, uh, the, the, um, the fence is going to be nanite converted and then the driveway. So the same way we're going to click here this building. So in this case, we click on the building itself and then we do select the driveway. Let's go back to nanite just so we can see when it happens, right? You can see that there's nothing here because it's not nanite, it's a spline mesh. We're going to click on the building which we have selected select the driveway and all of a sudden we see a driveway there and yet again we see the flickering so with the building selector we're going to go back and select the building right here and we go to driveway options and we're going to deselect use driveway and now you see that we have a nanite enabled driveway and the same thing with the same building selected we're going to bake selected props this is typically just a spline mesh because all the individual props are already nanite for example like this um like the foliage here so we'll click select the props and now you see that we have a nanite enabled fence and you can see it if i kind of come here and it's really thin but again it is nanite and if we wanted to select individual things we can use this selection mode here so if you wanted to select all the baked rows, you can kind of click here and notice that we have all of the rows that are being baked selected. Why would you use this? Let's say that you want to delete all of the baked rows and start over again for whatever reason. You can select all the baked rows here, delete them, then select the, the, the same rows and remove the spline only option and you can go back to square one. Same things, uh, same thing with baked plots. In this case, we literally just have one. It's the plot that we did. And then the same thing for driveways and we only have one driveway so i'm gonna go back to lit and you can see that automatically so i say bake driveways it only selects the one here and bake props it only selects this one right here and that is it for the quick start guide i hope you enjoyed the guide remember there's a link in the video description if you want to follow along using the written guide which are the exact same steps you can do that if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment on the video or join our Discord and ask me directly there. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next video.